Okay, let's talk about combining CSS properties. Specifically, the position property. We want to combine relative and absolute and see the different things that we can do with that. So this sample page that I've got right now, uh, I have in the HTML, there's a header, a main element, and a footer. Inside the main element, I've got a div with the ID box. So this purple background, this is the box. The green background is main. The sandy brown color is the footer and we've got white for the header. Now I've got a position property inside of both main and box set to static, which is the default. If you don't set a position property, that's what you're getting. Now, if I come in here and I add this margin to the top, you can see it pushes down. I just create a space above that. So that's by default, when something's position static, you're just pushing it down. And that will push down everything on the page, all the stuff that's below it. If I change this to position absolute, what happens is this element, the main element, is removed from the page, everything else is built, and then the main element is put back onto the page with that 5REM, the space putting it down from the top right here. It's pushed down by this margin from the top. So it, it's falling here. If we change the margin to a smaller amount, you can see it's overlapping here. If we set it to zero, that's where it was before. If we give it values for top, left, right, and so on, that's where it is. And then the margin will be measured away from there. So there's my margin pushing it away from this top left zero zero point. If we move this over, instead of zero, make it five REM, you can see I'm pushing it over and pushing it down five REMs. I use the margin instead of the top, but basically this is a five REM by five REM square. I've moved it over. Okay, so that's what position absolute does, is it measures it away from this top corner, or if you haven't given it properties, you just use padding margin, it's pushing it away from where it originally was. So there we are. Away from where it originally was, pushed down to here by five REMs, but it's put back on the page after the other content is built. So this stuff slides back up underneath. Relative, same sort of thing. It just takes it from the original position, pushes it down, but you'll see that it also pushed down the other content. So the footer got moved. Absolute, the footer pretended the thing wasn't there, popped up, relative, it stays where it was and gets pushed down still, but moved. Now if I do relative for the green and I change this one to absolute, we get a different thing happening. By changing something to div box, it's like when we took the the green main element and we set it to position absolute. Same thing's happening here. The stuff that's below it thinks it's not there and will move up to fill in that place. So that empty space that we had, here's the green box, and you can see that it's got padding top, padding bottom, but it's got no height. The purple box its dimensions no longer count. So we have the main element here with the box inside of it, but it's like the box has no height because it was removed and then put back on after the other content. The footer moved up to fill in that space. So the main has no idea how tall it is. Even without a margin, same sort of thing's gonna happen. There's the main element. It's got green for the padding. The purple box was taken off. The footer slid up right against the bottom edge of main, and then the absolute element got put back in. So why is this important? Well, with the combination of absolute inside of relative or absolute inside of absolute, if I move the main element, so let's say I set the left to 5 REM or 15 REM, you'll see how this continues along with it. Even though the absolute element was taken off the page and put back on, 
it is now relative to whatever it was inside of. So in my HTML, this div box was inside of the main element. If I take the main element, I put it anywhere, the box is going to follow and whatever dimensions I give it, whatever positioning I give it, will be relative to the main. Right now I haven't given it any coordinates, so it's just the zero, uh, the one REM margin uh, on the top and two REM margin on the left. That's where it's sitting. If I were to give it a top and left, absolute with top and left, you would consider it normally to be relative to this top corner of the screen. But if I do a 3REM, 3REM left, this is moving it from this point right here. So it's over 3REM, down 3REM from its original position, or from, sorry, from the top left corner of main. So wherever the box is for the content box for main, this is moved relative to that. That's what you get when you combine relative and absolute. If in the HTML you have one element inside of the other and the inside one is position absolute and the outside one is either relative or fixed or absolute, then the two of them get connected together in this special way. If you move the outer one, the child one will follow along wherever you move it. So if I put this back to left one REM, it brings the other one in long with it. So that's what you get with a combination of relative and absolute. Now, one last thing I want to talk about with this, with the footer, I want to show you with one of the pseudo elements, we can do after or before, you can create the same sort of thing. So even though there's no HTML, by using the pseudo element after or before, we're able to create content which is inside of that element. So we do the same sort of thing. Let's um, let's set a margin top on this of 10 REM just to get it away from the other stuff here. Now I'm going to put the position relative on the footer. By default, I haven't given it top left anything at all. So by default, it's going to sit where it normally would sit. It hasn't moved at all just because I gave it position relative. That just gives me the power to do things like this with the after element. I can now say position absolute and it's going to have content of, well, let's just say ABS. Now this is going to be the last thing inside the footer. The first thing inside is this paragraph. Well, actually there's a, a carriage return paragraph, another carriage return, and then the closing footer. So right here, if I get rid of those, just to illustrate my point, right here, between the closing paragraph and the closing footer tag, that is where we are inserting this ABS. So we can set it to display block if we want, give it a different background color. There it is. So we can style this in any way that we want. And if we move the footer, this will move along with it. So if I do come in and I do provide a top value to push this down, say two REM, now it shifted two REM down and then left, let's push it over eight REM. There it is. So it got pushed over and this guy moved along with it. We can specify top and left coordinates. And there it is, top left. Right there, the top left corner of the footer. Because we have that combination of relative and absolute, the absolute inside the relative. Because we've generated this, we've used the after pseudo element to actually create an element that is inside the footer. And we have this parent-child relationship with relative and absolute. Okay, common uses of this. Um, if you wanted to have a tool tip for something, the element itself, if you set it to relative, you could use after to create the content for a tool tip on something. If you've got uh, an image gallery and you wanted to put comments on every one of the images, you could use this same sort of trick, the relative absolute combination. 
Now it could be uh, an image tag with a span after it, both of them inside of a list item or a paragraph. Well, make the paragraph into the thing that has position relative, and then the span with the text would be the position absolute. The image could be position absolute as well. You can have two things that are position absolute inside of something that's relative, and it lets you position them both relative to the parent. All right, so I hope you found that useful. Um, it's something that you will see quite a bit in different layouts whenever there's tool tips or little things that are added, if extra little effects that are added onto content. This is frequently the way that it's done. So keep an eye out for that. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.